And that brings us to, I think, the thing that's really going to push BRCA1 and 2 testing, and that is the Olympiad study. Um, uh, do you want to talk about that, Debu? The design? Well, the, the Olympiad study is one of uh, several studies that uh, were launched a couple of years ago, specifically looking at patients with the germline BRCA1 or 2 mutations with metastatic disease, comparing PARP inhibition therapy to single agent chemotherapy of physician's choice. Uh, so this was the design of the Olympiad study, which is the first to report their data uh, a month ago or so, and a press release uh, uh, stated that it was a positive finding and uh, it's being presented at ASCO. Uh, so I think this is a big step forward. Uh, we in the past, as you said, uh, mostly were using BRCA for genetic counseling and familial counseling and maybe choosing the right surgery, but now we have a medical therapy. We know from uh, the ovarian cancer data and we also know from other studies in BRCA uh, tumors of diverse types, including pancreatic and prostate cancer, that these drugs are active. And now we have comparative data showing that it's actually a better choice than chemotherapy. So um, the big question is how durable are these responses going to be? Uh, how are patients going to do in the long term? Uh, we have PFS data so far. We know from ovarian cancer that resistance uh, can develop. In fact, some of these tumors regain the wild type sequence. And there's probably other mechanisms of resistance as well. So there's much we have to learn. Uh, but this is a, a promising sign. It gives us one therapy for a very difficult to treat uh, type of cancer. Most of these are triple negative, but of course in these trials there were many hormone receptor positive because of the BRCA2 mutations. Uh, there are several other studies that are ongoing looking at this. Uh, the PARP inhibitors are different one from another. For example, uh, telazoparib uh, has high PARP trapping, uh, which makes it more effective at, uh, as uh, an inhibitor, but also makes it more difficult to combine with chemotherapy, whereas viliparib is on the other end of the spectrum, less PARP trapping, but easier to combine with chemotherapy. So we'll have to await and the results. And we're seeing different results. I mean, the viliparib study with chemo really wasn't too promising. That was not right. The phase right. Uh, two was not. Uh, so again, I mean, it, it just before we kind of, I mean, this is really exciting stuff, and I think that we're going to now pro potentially have a label expansion into triple negative breast cancer, mm -hmm. you know, based on the data uh, from Olympiad. I think the, the real well, issue Well, this is any BRCA, so regardless Right, of it could be anybody, right? not even BRCA, yeah, just right, right. any BRCA. Mm -hmm. So, but I think like a lot of us will use it for triple negative. But the, the issue really becomes, you know, what do we do with the variance of unknown significance? If someone comes in, triple negative breast cancer, you know, she's been through, say, a first round chemotherapy, you decide to sequence her, and you get a variant of unknown significance. What do you do? Well, fortunately, with the, the database that many of these, uh, uh, many of the testers have developed, we now know that most of these are probably not deleterious, whereas the less studied ones, like PLB2, the variants of unknown significance are truly unknown. As time goes on, I think we're going to have fewer and fewer that really fall into that category. We'll either know them as deleterious or not. You can make some predictions as to whether they're deleterious by which uh, amino acid uh, are, cha are, are changed and so on and so forth. But uh, uh, it's not uh, as big a problem for BRCA1 or 2. So in my practice, if I have a BUS and let's say the patient got carbo, this is just what I'm going to do. You ask what I'm going to do. Uh, so and, yeah, because guys out there are going to want um, to know what to do. They're going to the want to know what to do. The uh, patient gets four cycles of carboplatin in four months and has this, their disease melts away. I'm probably going to offer that person a PARP inhibitor if yep. I can get it covered because at least there's something messed up with their DNA repair system. I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it is the VUS, but I don't want to penalize the women just because our databases aren't big enough to help mm -hmm. us figure out if it's important or not. I, I'm not sure so. I agree with that. I think that uh, that might be a measure, but there are some studies going on right now looking at uh, other measures well, of DNA repair. Well, the 17 assay BRCA. There, there are several. Some, we some of them are looking at the yeah. genome itself, uh, looking at uh, genomic scars that are a result of uh, homologous recombination deficiency, and, and there's some expression signatures as well. Uh, so I think that we will, over time, gain <laughs> some knowledge as to which ones with wild type BRCA may have sufficient deficiency is in DNA repair that they may respond. Uh, in ovarian cancer, there's already some data uh, from, from these signatures. So do you believe in the HRD, Carlos? Do you believe it's going to be a biomarker? I, I, I think it could be a biomarker, but I want to talk about the VUS yeah. uh, question. And there's something, and with all due respect to Kim. Oh, no. I think I, that, finally, uh, someone being a gentleman. No, in a gentleman. Fact, I, I'm going for cover, running for cover here. Uh, I cannot equate without more information that with bracket deficiency. Mm -hmm. 
So that's the phenotype we're looking for, right? Wow. BRCA deficiency, Correct. That, you know, and inability to repair the homologous recombination and, and, to, and to be sensitive to PARP inhibitors or cisplatin. And we cannot do that. So the first thing I do is I want to know, does that person have a wild type allele? And we have done that exercise. We call, uh, we use foundation medicine, and yeah. sometimes those patients have a wild type allele. They're not bracket deficient. Sometimes it's a, uh, the, the sequence is real. Okay, oh, maybe see, maybe of going. real, maybe maybe oh, functional, but it gets Excellent guess point. what? Guess what? It's it's just a, a, an allele frequency of ten percent. So Got even it. in the mute, very good point. So so we cannot equate that. So this is what molecular tumor boards are important. This is mm -hmm. sometimes I yeah, cannot rule out that you may need to actually engineer that mutation in the laboratory and address its significance right. because it may be the first time that it was detected. Very good point. I think for me clinically, just as a last point, is that how we'll utilize these drugs. I'm looking forward to clinical trials that will allow me to access these drugs for patients who have germline mutations in the other HRD genes. So yes. check to pal. I mean, I, I think that that actually, there's more data for that than there are for the VUSs. So then there are trials that are opening to help us address that.